All right, if you're watching this video, then you have clicked on the help for uh, example problem three on the uh, retention basin worksheet. So I've pulled up the problem statement for example problem three, and you can see it right here on, on, on the screen. Um, and then I also uh, summarized and, and tables the, the pertinent information um, for the model. So you have the uh, size of the, uh, uh, the BMP that you're going to use, uh, the size of the, the catchment or the watershed that you're working in, the location, your treatment objective, and then of course your pre and post development land use conditions. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna go to the model and then uh, Go to the introduction. So when you open your model, you should come to this page here. Um, again, you have uh, uh, your, your help buttons. Um, and then there's a click here to start button at the top. So to, to begin, we'll click here to start. Um, as you see, I have some, some information in here from a previous problem. Um, but you should reset your input. Uh, regardless, just to make sure that you don't have any other data in there. And so that'll reset everything in the model. Okay. So um, now uh, the, the first thing you want to do is ent enter your project name. So for this one, we're going to be doing example problem three. Okay. And so I'll insert that in. Um, next, we want to uh, select our uh, meteorological zone. So I'll select the View Zone Map button. That'll take us here. Um, and, and here you can see all of the, the, the different clusters for the state of Florida. Um, our particular project happens to be in um, Zone 4. Uh, it's over in, in the, the Tampa area. Um, so now we know our zone. I'm going to go back to the general site information. And here I'll select you. you it, uh, let me note that you need to select the cell first, and then the option will appear for the drop down menu. So now I'll select zone number four. Okay, and then the next thing I need to do is uh, select the mean annual rainfall. So I'm going to go to the view mean annual rainfall map. Okay, and, and since uh, we're over in Tampa, that's on the west part of the um, state. Uh, I'm going to go to the expanded view for the central region. Okay. And then so we have uh, Tampa over here. Um, and really, depending on where specifically you are in Tampa, you could be 51 inches, uh, maybe 52 in, in real south parts here, um, or, or 50. Um, but it seems that, that, the, that the, the city of Tampa itself is more in the 50 zone than anything. So we're going to select 50 for this problem. And so I'm going to go back to the general site information button. Okay, and then we'll input 50 inches. All right, and the next thing we want to do is specify the type of analysis that we're going to perform. Um, for this problem, we have a specified removal efficiency that we want to obtain. So uh, select the drop down menu. Um, again, note that there's the option for net improvement, which would be uh, post development uh, equal to or less than pre development conditions. Um, specified removal efficiency, so if there's a particular target that you need to achieve or BMP analysis. So if you have a BMP that you just want to analyze to see what kind of efficiency you would get. So for this problem, we have a specified removal efficiency, and that removal efficiency is 75%. Okay. So note that there's two boxes for the treatment efficiency uh, that, that, you, that, that you desire. Uh, the box on the left is for nitrogen removal, and the box on the right is for phosphorus removal. Okay, so now I'm going to go um, define my watershed. So we can click on the Go to Watershed Characteristics button right here. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is define your catchment configuration. So there's 14 different catchment configurations that you can choose from. Uh, and by selecting uh, this View Catchment Configuration button here, 
Um, it takes you to a, a, a picture display of all of the different catchment possibilities that, that you can choose from. Um, so if I scroll over and scroll down a little bit, you can see all of the different options um, that are available to you. For this problem, we're only dealing with a single catchment, so uh, I'm going to make note that it is a single catchment is, is the option that I want to choose. So now I'm going to go back to my watershed characteristics worksheet and make my selection. Okay, so now I'm back in my watershed characteristics sheet. Um, if I select the box here, you'll note that a little drop-down arrow appears, so I'll select that and then that will allow me to select between all of the different catchment options that were on the previous worksheet. So for this problem, we're dealing with a single catchment, so I'll select single catchment. Okay, next I want to define my pre and my post-development um, land uses. So uh, for my pre-development land use, we had agricultural pasture. So this is the third one down here. And for my post-development land use, we were looking at a residential area, so a single-family residential. Okay, and so if you just scroll down the list, you'll find it right here. Okay, um, next I need to define the, the size of my watershed, so my, my pre- and post-development um, conditions. So first I have an 11-acre watershed, so I'm going to enter 11 acres into my total pre and post uh, catchment areas. So 11 in the first one, 11 in the second box. So um, now I need to specify my pre-development non-DCIA curve number. Um, that was specified as 50 and we had 0% uh, DCIA percent. So I'm going to put a 0 there. Now for our post-development non-DCIA curve number, um, again, we, we tend to get a little bit of compaction during construction processes, so you'll, you'll, you'll tend to see a little bit of a, an increase in the um, curve number, and here is no exception, went up to 65, and then our DCIA percentage is 25%. Um, for this problem, we're, we also have a uh, one acre um, retention basin that we're going to be examining, so there is a, a option at the bottom to input the um, size of the BMP. So I'm going to input that as one acre. Now the, the reason that you input this, this value in is because um, due to mandates from the Water Management District, your, your BMP will not contribute to your nitrogen and phosphorus loadings for, your, for calculation purposes. However, it will generate volume that needs to be accounted for. So that's why that value is there. I also want to point out that this, this worksheet shows you your pre-development and post-development nitrogen and phosphorus annual mass loadings. And you can see those over here. Um, for this problem, we're using the default concentrations that are, that are hardwired into the model. However, there is an option to overwrite the default concentrations with some other values, um, should it be necessary. And if that's the case, select from the drop-down menu, and then you would insert those values up in these, in these boxes here. Okay? Um, so now we have our... Uh, our catchment defined and our watershed defined, so we're going to move forward to um, define our BMP. So next what we're going to do is select the go to stormwater treatment analysis button and move to stormwater treatment analysis worksheet. Okay, so here we're on the uh, stormwater treatment analysis worksheet. And here you'll notice that we have the buttons for every single BMP that can be analyzed with this model. Uh, you'll also see there is a picture of the uh, watershed configuration and catchment configuration that you selected from the previous worksheet. Also uh, displayed here is the required treatment efficiency for both nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, and that was specified from the uh, general site information um, worksheet. So for um, for this, we're going to be doing a retention basin, so I'm going to select the retention basin button and we'll move to the retention basin worksheet. Okay, so when you get to the retention basin worksheet, you'll see that there's an option for up to four catchments. 
Um, for this problem, we only have one catchment that we're working with, so and that's just catchment one. Um, you'll note that the, uh, that, the, that the project description is displayed here on the top. Um, and there's also a schematic of a, uh, of a retention basin over here. Um, and you'll see down in, this, down in this left corner here, there is a, a, a treatment efficiency curve um, related to retention depth. Now, one of the things that this model does on this sheet is it calculates for you the amount of retention depth um, that is required in order to meet your treatment objective. Um, so if space isn't an issue or, or there's no other constraints, you can simply read in this value into your um, provided uh, retention depth um, cell. So that's what we're going to do here, and that's 0.552 inches. Okay, And then you can see that it shows our provided treatment efficiency for nitrogen and phosphorus is 75 for each. Now the reason we get the same treatment efficiency for both nitrogen and phosphorus it has to do with the way that retention systems work. And so for retention systems, you're dealing with a reduction of the volume of water. So assuming that the entire volume of water generated has a uniform concentration of nitrogen and phosphorus, if you reduce the volume of water by 75%, then you also reduce the mass of nitrogen and phosphorus by 75%. And so that's what's shown right here. Um, next, we're going to go to the stormwater treatment analysis sheet again so that we can go see our uh, uh, summary of what we've done here. Okay, so now we're back at the stormwater treatment analysis uh, worksheet. So everything's the same as before, except now we're going to go to the catchment and treatment summary results worksheet. And to do that, we'll just simply click on this button. Okay, and now that brings us to the catchment and treatment summary results worksheet. Um, you'll see that our project title has been carried through over here. You can also add additional um, identification if, if so desired or, or if required. You'll see that all four catchments are shown. Um, however, since we're only using catchment one, um, we only have, you know, only something shows up only in catchment one. Um, so again, we're using just one BMP, and that was a retention basin. It can be seen here that we do have the option, though, to allow up to three BMPs per individual catchment. Um, down here, under the summary performance, uh, you can see our catchment configuration, which is a single catchment. Um, also shows our pre, our pre and post loads for our, uh, based on our site conditions. Uh, you can see our target load reduction of 75% here. Um, and then also you can see our, our provided overall efficiency, which is 75%, so we met our, our treatment goals. And then down here on these last, uh, uh, these last four rows, this gives us our discharge load for nitrogen on the top, phosphorus on the bottom, this is in kilograms per year on the left and in pounds per year on the right. And then the load removed uh, for both nitrogen and phosphorus is also here with the kilograms per year on the left and pounds per year on the right. And that completes this problem.